always on your side. This is First Coast News at 5. And first at five tonight, we are covering breaking news involving a deadly police shooting in Kingsland, Georgia last week. We have just learned moments ago that tonight officer Zachariah Presley has turned himself in to the custody of the Camden County Sheriff's Office. The officer arrested for one count of voluntary manslaughter as well as violation of his oath of office. First Coast News, we broke this news story within the past hour. You got the alert to your cell phone with a push alert about the arrest. Now the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, the GBI, issuing an arrest warrant stemming from the shooting last Thursday that led to the death of Tony Green. He was shot after a traffic stop in chase. Tonight, First Coast News reporter Hani Rodriguez is speaking to a family friend of the victim and learning more about this investigation. Hani. Hey, Anthony, I had the opportunity before this news uh, just came down to speak with Pastor Mac Knight. He is a family friend of the Green uh, family. He has been the one talking to the media and helping the family through this entire process. Well, today they had their second meeting with uh, the district attorney as well as the GBI. He told me earlier that they received very pertinent information. Of course, they are hopeful and are at peace a little bit more now, but he told me they are still waiting for a, a piece of key evidence in this incident, and that is body camera video that has not been released yet. Tony can't talk, unfortunately he's dead. So that body cam will be his voice, and it'll be what really happened. Because the only, thing, only person that can say something now is the officer, because Tony is not here. But the body cam will be the exact situation that happened. Again, this body camera video has not yet been released, but we are going to be speaking with Pastor Green, uh, excuse me, Pastor Knight in just a little bit here and getting his reaction from the latest news. We're live in Kingsland coming up at 6. I'm Honey Rodriguez, First Coast News on your side. Honey, thank you. And tonight we are digging deeper and we are getting you some answers tonight. Newly released documents obtained by First Coast News provide an inside look at the background and history of the Kingsland police officer now charged with manslaughter. On your side tonight, we're going through hundreds of pages of his personnel file. The file includes a complaint filed by a man saying he feared for his life, believing he would be, quote, taken away by Presley and another officer, even claiming Presley parked in front of his home after making a prior complaint. Now, in his job application, several items were listed as things that should be reviewed before making a hire. Those included issues with domestic violence, marijuana, and complaints of yelling at people. Presley has been on the force since last summer. He had complaints involving traffic stops, including a woman that accused Presley of racial profiling. Presley has been placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of a GBI investigation into the shooting. We're going to stay on top of that breaking news. We're also tracking some storms right now building across the first coast. The action was south of Jacksonville, but let's take a live look outside uh, at our traffic camera now on the left there. Uh, some spotty showers popping up near downtown and then on the right you see out of the beach sunny skies there. We're in the weather center tonight with meteorologist Tim Deegan, who is tracking it all for us and all means a big variety. Yeah. So let's talk about it all right now as we head from the afternoon into the evening hours. As Heather mentioned, the showers and thunderstorms earlier in the day really during the afternoon primarily for you folks over Putnam and Flagler. The winds blowing out of those storms are working to the north and thus we're seeing thunderstorms expand northward now into Clay and into portions of St. Johns County. We'll zoom in a little bit closer and we'll show you the action. Do you see it? This green line here. So uh, this is where the thunderstorms are. That's the easy part, part right? You folks know over southern Clay County, you know you have thunderstorms over St. Johns County. Highway 13, these thunderstorms, you know you have those and they're beginning to develop in Duval. But where are the thunderstorms going to form because we want you indoors before those thunderstorms develop. We're going to look at both the uh, sea breeze. Heather talked about the sunny skies at the beach. That's because the sea breeze has now made it to about uh, San Jose. That is along and east of I-95 and then winds are blowing out of those former thunderstorms heading toward the north and where those are combining. That's where the clouds are rapidly developing. At the same time, there's a whole nother ingredient coming at us from the northwest. So as far as the combination of the sea breeze with the thunderstorms that we did have down south, the new thunderstorms will be rapidly developing over these areas of northwestern St. John's and northeastern Clay County and then into Duval. In fact, we have some pretty strong thunderstorms rapidly developing over some of our neighborhoods in Duval and Steve Fundera is here to check it out and take it to street level. Steve. 
Yeah, Tim, and there's currently now they're the kind of storms that aren't necessarily so big, but they're what the, the catalyst is to develop some some stronger um, and even bigger thunderstorms. So let's take a look at the radar now. We'll turn around and, and get a look at um, our current look now. Tim, if you could flip over to uh, WSI 2 for me, please, that would be very helpful. There we go. All right, cool. So let's get in real quick to one of the ones that has got some good lightning, a good thunderstorm with us near um, Caleb now from as far north as Old, uh, Old Gainesville Road to as far south as you go through uh, State Road. Uh, 134. There are plenty of lightning there with some rainfall rates that have been pretty impressive too, um, upwards of an inch or so per hour. Now these don't last that long, but um, if you hear thunder, you know, obviously you do head indoors um, to, to avoid the threat of some lightning. Some good downpours are hitting currently right now over our studio roof um, downtown uh, on the west side uh, from, uh, you go to, um, this is, what is this, 23, Route 23 here. Um, uh, division to Fairfax as well and then up towards the north side where some good downpours up near Pearl Court from uh, say East 46th Street down to Winona Drive there's some good downpours here now as I mentioned these are ones that aren't going to last so long um, and aren't necessarily so big but they're a catalyst to when we get that collision that Tim was talking about earlier to see some stronger and more um, uh, greater development all right Steve Tim thank you both well, today marks the second day in the trial of the alleged murderers of this precious little boy, Aiden McClendon. The 22-month-old was shot and killed back in 2016, allegedly caught in the crossfire of two rival gangs. Kwame Richardson and Henry Lee Hayes are charged with that little boy's murder. Both suspects have pleaded not guilty. First Coast News reporter Julie Janae is on your side. She's been in the courtroom tonight and joins us now live. We saw a different line of testimony today for these juries. Yesterday's was very emotional. It focused on the victim, Aiden McClendon, but today's focused on gang culture and rap lyrics. Kwame uh, Richardson and Henry Lee Hayes are both being tried for McClendon's murder. They have two juries that are hearing this case, and at the center is the prosecution's case is that these men were gang members. So gang unit detectives today testify about the tactics of 187 and the PCE gangs here in Jacksonville and how they use rap lyrics to taunt each other. What you see sitting there on the screen is an online rap video by the 187 gang that was played today for the jury. But the most compelling testimony was from another gang member. He's now incarcerated and we withheld his identity at the request of the court who fear that there may be retaliation over his testimony today. That witness said he's getting nothing in exchange for his testimony, but that he knew the people in the neighborhood and the community and felt compelled to speak out. Now, coming up at 6, we'll have more from what came out today at trial, including how a 2015 shooting fueled that rivalry between those gangs and led to the death of a toddler one year later. Reporting live from the Duval County Courthouse, Julia Janae, First Coast News on your side. Julia, thank you. Some more breaking news we're continuing to follow at this hour. Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy says he will retire at the end of July. Justice Kennedy wrote President Trump a letter today saying he will give up his seat on the highest court effect of July 31st. Kennedy has proved to be a consequential swing vote during his three decades on the bench, siding with liberals on gay marriage and abortion rights. The president says his search for Kennedy's replacement will begin immediately and we'll have much more on his retirement at 5.30. A teenager accused of killing his own grandmother was back in court today. Logan Mott is accused of killing Christina French in November. Today, a pretrial date was set for August 16th. Mott is charged with second-degree murder. He has pleaded not guilty. In Clay County, we've learned that the state will seek the death penalty against the alleged killer of Jordan Cooper. Cooper's mother reported her missing around Thanksgiving of last year. The following month, her body was found in the attic of her home. DNA evidence helped deputies arrest a neighbor, Joe Turner, who's now charged with murder and sexual battery. His next court appearance is scheduled for September. Continuing coverage tonight, we are getting our first look at the suspect vehicle in the murder case of Catalina James. You see it right here. Police are looking for that white Buick that's going back and forth in this video. That murder happened off Dix Ellis Trail Sunday, and James is the third transgender woman killed in Jacksonville just this year. First Coast News reporter Crystal Bailey joins us live with an update on the investigation. Crystal. 
Well, James was 24 years old. Her family's in town today, all the way from South Carolina. Meeting with detectives, they say she loved to dance, they, she loved to travel. Detectives just releasing these images. Take a look, this white car is seen driving down the street. Detectives think the shooter got into the passenger seat of this car after the shooting took place. This is video of that car leaving the scene on Dix Ellis Trail. James was shot early Sunday morning at the Quality Inn. She was transgender and went by various names, including Catalina, Christina James, Isha Wilson, Chris James, and Aisha. They're asking anyone with information on the murder, location of that car, and people in the car to come forward and contact the sheriff's office. There is a $3,000 reward for anyone who can help. And tonight, an activist group is holding an event right here from the Duval County Courthouse at 7 o'clock. That event is called Trans Lives Matter, a call for justice. We'll be out here covering that event as well. Reporting live, Crystal Bailey, First Coast News, on your side. Crystal, thank you. Well, this week at the AAU Volleyball Nationals in Orlando, one coach is noticeably absent from that tournament, Rick Butler. This is the first year that Sarah Powers Barnhart of Jacksonville says she won't have to look over her shoulder at the tournament, wondering if she'll run into him. Powers, who is now a coach herself, says Butler sexually abused her when she played for him back in the 80s, and she was a minor. Allegations that are also part of a federal lawsuit that Butler now faces. We start, first started reporting on Butler more than a year ago, and since then, USA Volleyball, the AAU, and now Disney, home of the AAU Nationals, has banned him. I always tell people it's like turning the Titanic. It's very slow. You have to take time. You have to be patient. We've been very patient 22 years. We're not remiss in understanding that there's still a lot to do. A lot has happened. It's amazing. We need to keep working diligently to continue that. Butler denies the allegations. He's never been charged with any crime. We're going to have a lot more on this story coming up tomorrow night on First Coast News at 11. Well, the summer heat are creeping higher, and so are your electric bills. Trust me, I know. Yeah, so is there a way that you can actually save some cash by setting your thermostat at a certain temperature? We're going to be verifying that. Plus, stinging sea lice, where these pesky sea creatures were spotted on the Florida coast, and how you can prevent this from happening to you.